Well, hello there. So we have this thing called the Feelings app. It's not a Young Living app. It's not a Genware app, darn it. It's brilliant. Wish I had come up with it. Um, it is an app that goes with the book, Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. It's a powerful book. It's a powerful app. If you download the app, I think it's $4.99, you get an ebook with it so you can read it on your phone or your device or what have you. Many of you have downloaded this app. Somebody today messaged me with a great question about it, and it was this. I have the app. I don't know what to do with what it tells me. So, for example, if you, let me pull up something. Um, let's say, how, how would you use this app? So if you're, you know, I know you're watching this on your device. So when we're done, go ahead and download it. It's, it's worth it, I promise you. So let's say you have a back pain. Um, and if you're, if you're thinking, okay, Jen Weir has preached this for a long time. Um, how do I, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and, and assume this back struggle is a feeling that's deep in, but I don't know what that is, right? This is how this works. This is why you would want to um, use it. Or, you know what, let me use something more, um, what's going on now. So like a lot of people have some respiratory struggles. And so you would look up in the app, you know, under lungs. Here are the things that the app will say. Um, lungs would have, it says feelings of grief, not feeling approval, hurts where love is concerned, uh, feels life is monotonous, or not being able to do things your own way. So these are five things that scientists, doctors, uh, holistic doctors, excuse me, have, have thought of, have realized, have studied and researched and realized, you know what? When someone has feelings of grief, this is where that emotion lies and it ends up being in their lungs. Um, this may not resonate with you right now. It might be a little too out there. That's fine. Um, but what I do know is I have studied this long enough and I've tested this and it's true. So whether you believe it or not, the proof is in the pudding. So you download this app, you look it up and you're like, wow, crap. Turns out nose issues if I have a stuffy nose okay, yeah, I am feeling impatient. I do feel unwilling. I am not accepting my worth. Hmm. Like it, if it resonates with you, if what the app says about your lung issue, your nose issue, or the back pain that you're having, now you're going, well, that's just lovely. What the hell do I do with this? I understand. So you have a second app. The Reference Guide for Essential Oils. I'm sure you've all downloaded it. If you haven't downloaded that app, stop this video and do it now because you are completely missing out on a valuable resource. Everybody needs an app that they can go to and say, okay, I'm having this struggle. What oil would I use for this? So let's go back. Typically, if someone's having a respiratory issue, they will look in the app and say, oh, what's good for a cold? What's good for stuffiness? What's good for coughs? You know, this and that. Up until now, most folks don't look at it for the emotion. Okay, so now you're thinking, yeah, that makes sense. I've been using eucalyptus on my chest. I've been using RC and I'm still struggling. You know why? Because there's still trapped grief or there's still those feelings of worthlessness or whatever it is. So you go to that app and you say, okay, what, what, do, what does this app say for this particular feeling? Not the feelings app, I'm talking about the essential reference guide for oils. Excuse me, it's the reference guide for essential oils. I, I misspoke. Um, so you go to that. Grief, let's say you're thinking, okay, yeah, I am struggling with some grief. Great, now what? So there's a section in there that says grief and you look and I believe it's Bergamo. Um, acceptance, I think release is one of them. And now you have these three oils. So you've looked in the Healing Feelings app. You've self-diagnosed, right? You're like, yeah, that's kind of spot on. Um, and you look in your Reference Guide app and now you're 
presented with, you know, one or five choices. That's usually about what it is. This is where the rub is, where we're like, do I use them all? Do I use two? How do I know? We muscle test, of course. Now, if you're like me and raised in the 80s, where all of that sounds up a little bit too hippy-dippy, don't worry, you're in good company. Because the first time I got muscle tested, um, we were in California, I think it must have been about 14 years ago. So he held up, the chiropractor held up a bottle of supplements. He's okay, hold it here. He puts my arm out and he's like, don't let me push it down. And he, we did this thing. If you've had muscle testing that way from a doctor, you know what I'm talking about. And I thought, this guy is a complete whack job that I'm giving money to, That whatever. And I bought his supplements and oh, what do you know, they worked. Darn it. We used to call him the voodoo doctor. I know that's nice, right? Well, guess what, guys? You can muscle test on yourself, and I'm gonna show you how. Very, very simple. There are so many ways to muscle test, several ways. This is the most simple way that I have learned to do it on myself. In my book, I have another book here that I just absolutely love called Releasing Emotional Patterns with Essential Oils. In the back of it, um, there, they show several different techniques of muscle testing. And they say, unless you are a, you know, if you're well versed in muscle testing, you probably shouldn't. Um, but I think if you practice it enough, you'll start to see. And doing it maybe when you don't have an issue going on, just playing around, having your children do it, your husband and you or your friends playing around with it. And, and this is the O-ring method. This is the simplest way. There's the sway test. There's the blind test. There's you know, like I just demonstrated with your arm, that takes somebody else. With children, you can have them resist you by putting their hands like this out and then trying to push away if your hands are outside their hands. There's ways you can do it with kiddos. But for you, just to practice, and so now you're presented with um, maybe three choices. I'm gonna put three different oils here in front of me. Um, and, and they say to do it in your non-dominant hand, which for most people is their right hand. Excuse me, their left. I'm left-handed, and I just thought, oh, I've been doing it with my left hand all the time, but I now I'm realizing, oh, I'm going to do it with my right. But for you, it's probably going to be your left hand, because most of you are right-handed. Um, so your non-dominant hand, you want to make an O, right, and, and pinch your fingers so that you don't, you cannot get anything through, and you have like your, your index finger, your strongest finger, right, and you want to be able to do this. You don't want to let yourself get through. And what you can do is take your oil. You can either hold it in your hand, although that will make this hand, um, if, you, if you're if you not real strong um, by nature, it might make that hand feel a little bit weak. You can tuck it just in your collar. See like that, right? It's just on your person. If you're laying down, let's say, this is a great thing. If you are struggling with a lung issue or you know, you're wanting to figure that out, you can put the oil on your lung. Um, if you have a belly issue, you can lay down and do it on your belly. Just so that the oil is on the organ, that's another way to hold it. If you have a pocket, just stick it in your pocket. You can put it in your jeans pocket. As long as the oil is on your person, it will work. Um, if any of this sounds like, what? I'm not understanding. It's all has to do with frequency and the vibration of the oil. Go back and watch our frequency class and it'll make so much more sense. But these oils, they're moving. The molecules are moving right now. The frequency is high. And so just having it on you like this, even though it's in a bottle, your body will respond to it. It will want that oil. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck this one here and I'm gonna do this, right? And then I can just make sure I hold really strong. So because I can't break through, then um, what I know is transformation is a good oil for me. I'm gonna do abundance. Interestingly enough, I did abundance yesterday and it, I kept breaking through, so I'm curious to see what it does today. It was like I just didn't need it. Oh, see, you see that? Like I'm trying and I got it through. So abundance, meh, apparently I have enough of that. Um, the next one is believe. Yesterday I held strong for believe, so we'll see what happens today. Yep, believe. Don't need it. That's not surprising given my prayer time today. So the oil that I would choose then today is transformation. 
And so remember what we talked about the other day in um, activating our oil. So we're gonna drop our oil on your non-dominant hand, which for me is my right hand, and we're gonna go clockwise to activate it. You always wanna activate your oils, okay? And because transformation is an emotional oil, I'm gonna put some here, and I'm gonna do the other part on my brainstem, because what it does is it makes a parallel line between my pituitary gland and my brainstem, right there. See that? And then I'm gonna rub it together again, take some good breaths, and breathe it out. And that, my friends, is how you muscle test. If you have any questions, drop them below. And if you don't have the app, both apps, you definitely wanna check that out. That's how you know how to use your oils. Have a great day, everybody.